Hello, this is Mr. Collier, and today we're going to be making a box plot on Desmos. So here I've got a couple of data sets. These are test scores from test 1 and test scores from test 2. So I'm going to copy and paste the test score scores for uh, score 1. I just press shift and selected those and selected all of them. They're all highlighted. I'm going to copy and press command C or, or do that. Then I'm going to go over to Desmos. And we're going to create a list of data values called A. So you have to type in A equals. And if you go to the uh, little keyboard in the bottom left hand corner, you get lots of different uh, features. If you click on ABC, you can get some different symbols and things like that. So we can get a square bracket, or this is also on your keyboard. So this needs to be in a square bracket. I'm just going to paste my Excel data. So it's all pasted in there. And it created a, I don't know why I did an extra bracket at the beginning, but it cre created a 110 element list. So that's what we wanted. And then we're going to do the same thing for test two. Go and copy all of that data. Paste it in a square bracket. And, oops, I don't know why these things pop up, but there we go, it's ready. So now, uh, both data lists are in A and B. Okay, so next we can go uh, go back to this keyboard thing and go to functions. And we've got a bunch of stuff. Oh, we can get mean, median, mode, all kinds of things here, look. But we can go over here and we get uh, box plot. Okay, so we do box plot A. And it's, it looks like just a whisker here right now. So, and there's the box over there. So you might want to change your scale a bit. You can click on this uh, wrench up here. Uh, on the x-axis, we probably just want 0 to, what's our maximum values? Oh, it's the percent score, so probably 100 or maybe a little bit more than 100 if somebody's already gotten 100%. The y-axis doesn't really matter so much. So let's just go 0 to 10 or even maybe 0 to 5. Okay, and then it, yeah, that looks, well, I'll zoom in and out too, look. That looks sort of normal, okay. Actually, the on a box plot, the y-axis doesn't mean anything, so you probably want to do something like that, or you can actually, you can click on this one here, and then the y-axis is gone, so we don't really need that at all. And then we can do the same for box plot B. Okay. Now they're overlapped here right now, so that's why we can go to offset and pop this up maybe a little bit higher. Okay, now you can compare them. Actually, they're pretty similar, these test scores. The median for the second one is a bit a bit larger, okay? So we've got that done. Maybe you want to yeah, push this down a bit, a little bit like that. You can change the height of the box plots too, but that's not really totally necessary. Here we've got include or exclude. Looks like there's no outliers. If you... Uh, well, actually, let's click here. So outliers would be shown with a with a dot or an X on the outside here, but there's no outliers in this set. Okay, so there's a couple other things we can do in the functions under the stat menu. You can do things like find the, the mean of the set of A. There you go. Uh, you can you can get the standard deviation. We use standard deviation P for population standard deviation. You can also get, if you click on just stats, it gives you the minimum Q1, median, Q3, and the maximum. So it gives you all that stuff right there. So you have all that available to you. Now another important thing before you screenshot this and put it into a report, you want to have a title and label each box plot and have and label your axis down here. Um, we can do all that by making a and labeling points. So let me show you there. Now notice we want maybe to put test 2 right here, put a label test 2. That's about, that point is 110, and I believe this is only going up to 10, so I think this is about 110.5. Let's test it. 110,5 is a little bit too high. I want it down at 4. That's a 3, I think. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let me just label. Click on label, and then you can type in test 1. And you can click on this, uh, click on this dot right here, and it gets rid of the dot too, and it just says test one.
so that looks nice. Then we could do the same thing for, actually I think that was test two, I think so. So that's 110 comma, uh, let's say two, no one, goes right there. And if I click on label, oops, label, test one, then I can click on this dot to make it disappear. There we go, that looks nice. We want a title for the whole thing. Let's call it, uh, uh, let's get the point first. So I'll put that right in the middle, so maybe 60, comma 5, that looks like a good spot, maybe over a little bit more, oh no, I don't want that, change that, maybe 70, okay, right there looks like a good spot, let's label, and grade 8 test scores, let's say, okay, maybe I'll even move that down a bit. 4.5 looks better. And I need to label the axes here, that the, the x-axis. So let me just put this up here a bit there like that. And let's call that uh, oh, let's get the point first. I suppose 70 again, comma negative 1, maybe negative 0 0.8 7 right there. Okay, so I'll label that test scores. And when you're labeling an axis, you really want the units in there. So this is in percent. Click on that. That looks like a pretty good location. Then you can just uh, do Control Shift Command 4 and get yourself a nice screenshot and you get a perfect box plot.